Hi guys, I'm Gabby and welcome to my channel if it's your first time here and if you're returning, thank you so much and welcome back. Today's video is a requested one from a viewer. Thank you to Colette for your question. Colette asked that I do a video on Form 485. So today we'll be discussing the USCIS Form I-485. So let's just jump right in. So what exactly is USCIS Form I-485? Well, per the USCIS website, Form I-485 is an application to register permanent residence or adjust status. It is used by a person in the United States to apply for lawful permanent residence status, also known as a green card, without having to leave the U.S. The process is typically used by individuals who have entered the United States on a temporary visa, such as a student or work visa, and wish to become permanent residents. However, for those applying for a marriage green card, the purpose of the Form I-485 is to prove that the foreign spouse is eligible for U.S. permanent residency. So when the foreign spouse is present in the United States, oftentimes it's possible to file Form I-130 and Form I-485 at the same time. When this process is done, it is referred to as concurrent filing. The alternative to adjustment of status is consular processing, which is when you apply for a green card from outside of the United States. When you use consular processing, your green card will be processed by your nearest U.S. consulate or embassy, and you will remain outside of the United States until your green card is approved. Both adjustment of status and counselor processing have their own timelines, their own application forms, supporting documents and costs, but the eligibility requirements are the same. The major benefit of adjustment of status versus counselor processing is that the applicant can remain in the United States while waiting for a green card. Generally, they can obtain a social security number, they may be able to accept employment in the U.S. and travel in and out of the U.S. as well. But in order to do these three things, they will need to submit additional forms for each one of them. Certain foreign nationals who are physically present in the United States may use Form I-485 to apply for permanent resident status. And these individuals, they'll need to be eligible for a green card as well as meet some additional requirements in order to adjust their status. So the three main requirements they must um, meet in order to be eligible to fill out the form are number one, they need to be physically present inside the United States. So you must already be inside the United States when you file Form I-485 and you will need to continue to be in the U.S. as they process um, the form. Number two, you will need to have made lawful entry into the United States. And lawful entry means that you were admitted in the United States with a valid documentation, typically a visa, and you were face-to-face -face with a U.S. immigration officer. That officer acknowledged your entry into the United States. Now, please keep in mind that if you enter it with a valid visa, but later um, your visa expired, you still have what is considered lawful presence. The third requirement to be able to file for Form I-485 is that you have to have an um, uh, immigrant, you have, you must have an immigrant visa immediately available to you. So a visa is always available to those who are in the immediate relative category. However, family preference um, applicants, they have to make sure that a visa is available. So their visa must be current before they can file form for a form I-485. So if you're a family preference if you're in the family preference category, meaning you're not an immediate, immediate relative, it's important that you understand that an approved I-130 um, petition does not mean that you'll come to the U.S. The approved petition means that USCIS has confirmed that you have a qualifying relationship and you establish your place in line for a visa. So this visa bulletin will tell you when a visa is actually available to you. There's a priority date that specifies specifies your placing line. So when your visa becomes current, that means that you reached the front of the line. The U.S. Department of State typically publishes a monthly visa bulletin and it will list all the priority dates that have become current. So you need to check out the U.S. Department of State's visa bulletin to determine if your um, visa is current. Now let's discuss the cost. 
the total USCIS fee to file for I-485 is currently $1,225. This includes the $1,140 filing fee plus, plus the $85 biometric fee. In some situations, the fees are reduced. For instance, the biometric fee is waived for children under the age of 14, as well as for adults over the age of 78. Additionally, there may be a reduced fee of $750 for applicants who are under 14 and filing with Form I-485 of at least one, one parent. Refugees pay no fees when filing the application as well. Generally, those applying for adjustment of status will fill out multiple forms. Please make sure to visit the USCIS website to see which forms apply for your particular case. So we discussed some requirements for filing for Form I-485. So let's talk about specifically who can file Form I-485. So an applicant can file Form I-485 based on seven major categories. Some of these are family-based, employment-based, um, special immigrant-based, or refugees. And these seven categories are further broken down into like 27 subcategories to be more clear on exactly who can and cannot file. Keep in mind, for the purposes of a marriage-based green card, only a foreign spouse who is physically present in the U.S. can file Form I-485 to apply for a green card. And a spouse must have entered the U.S. on a valid visa. Additionally, an immigrant visa must be immediately available to them. This means that Form I-130 must have already been approved or they have filed Form I-130 and Form I-485 concurrently. Family-based I-485 applicants generally requires Form I-130 to be submitted as well. However, other categories such as like employment, asylum, or K-1 entry-based applications does not require Form I-130. So we know who can apply for I-485. Let's talk about those who cannot file Form I-485. So relatives of a spouse who are not physically present in the United States cannot file Form I-485. Moreover, even if you are physically present in the U.S., there are some eligibility exclusions that might prevent you from filing. And some of these are you enter the U.S. as a crewman or on transit purposes, or you enter the U.S. as a witness or informant. In addition to these in, um, these eligibility exclusions, there may be some inadmissibility grounds that can stop you from filing, such as health-related grounds, criminal grounds, security grounds, um, violations of immigration laws, and so forth. But depending on your situation, there may be waivers available that may be able to help you get over these grounds for um, disqualification. All right, let's talk about supporting documents. Form I-485 applicants need to be filed with supporting documents to prove that the applicant is eligible for a green card. If you are filing for a marriage-based I-485 application, then you will need proof that the spouse entered the United States with a valid visa. You will need proof of the foreign spouse nationality, which is typically a birth certificate or passport. Proof of the spouse's ability to financially support the spouse, which is typically the affidavit of a support form, which is Form I-864. And if the spouse's expert green card has ever been arrested, any proof that there was not a conviction. So I know you may also be wondering, well, what's the difference between Form I-485 and Form I-130? Well, if you are helping a relative immigrate to the America, the first step in the process is submitting Form I-130. Now, Form I-130, which is officially called a Petition for Alien Relative, is the first step in the family-based green card process. And the purpose of Form I-130 is to prove that a valid family relationship exists between a U.S. citizen or green card holder and the person seeking a green card. So. In the case of a marriage-based visa or spouse visa, the I-130 is filed to prove that the marriage is legally valid. So since the purpose of Form I-485 is to adjust your status, it can also be to be used if you have already entered the United States with a valid visa. So if your relative is already physically present in the United States, then Form I-485 
will be the second step in the family-based green card process after submitting Form I-130. However, if you're you are the spouse, parent, or a married child under the age of 21 of a U.S. citizen, then you can file both Form I-130 and um, Form I-485 at the same time. Form I-485 can also be used for other types of green card applications, those that fall under the seven main categories that we discussed earlier. Another question you might have is, can I file Form 485 if I'm outside of the United States? Well, no, you have to physically be inside the United States to be able to file Form 485. If not, then the counselor processing may be your best option. You also might be wondering, what is the main difference between Form 485 and counselor processing. Form I-485 is used when a person is applying for a green card and is already in the United States. If they are outside of the United States, then they may find um, counselor processing to be best. Now, if you file Form 485 in order to have permission to work in the United States, you have to submit a separate application known as Form I-765. This is the application for employment authorization. And those who are just their status are generally eligible for this employment authorization, they can file this form along with Form 485. If it so happens that you already filed, then just make sure you wait until you receive your receipt notice from USCIS to be able to attach that receipt number to your case. Also, if you're within the United States, in order to be able to travel, just my status applicants that leave the United States without advanced parole or a travel document, they will have considered to abandon their application and will have issues re-entering. So you would need to request or fill out form I-131, which is the application for travel document. You can file this along with your form 485. However, keep in mind, if you had any period of unlawful presence in the United States, you may want to consult with an attorney to see what are your best options before you file form I-131. Okay, so just to sum up basically what we discussed about what Form I-485 is, it is basically an adjustment of status application used by foreign nationals who have gained lawful entry into the United States and they want to apply for a green card without leaving the United States or having to return to their home country to complete the visa processing. So basically, you have to already have been inside of the U.S. on another visa and then you want to change that particular visa status from whatever status that visa is, say it's a tourist status, to a green card. So you're adjusting your status from the previous visa in order to get your green card to live in the U.S. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Of course, I'm not an immigration expert, nor am I an immigration attorney. So please do your due diligence in researching further for yourself. In addition, please visit the USCIS website for further guidance. And I also recommend that you visit the visajourney.com website. This is what I use to help me in my immigration process, and it may be of help to you as well. All right, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel before you leave. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.